Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Devotions. This morning we're at Numbers chapter 3, verses 23 through 29, I think, something like that. Why don't we have some coffee? Not coffee. Not coffee. You got milk in a fancy teacup. All right, we'll have some, some something to drink, coffee, milk maybe, and we'll pray and we'll get into God's Word. All right, good job. You ready to pray? All right. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for time together. Thank you for the blessing. Keep praying. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you would please help us to understand your word. We pray that as we read it, we would understand it and that you would apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, num- uh, Deuteronomy. I got to remember that. We're not in numbers. We're in Deuteronomy. Here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Here we go. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works or your mighty deeds? I pray, let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account. And would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, Enough of that. Speak no more to me of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift up your eyes toward the west, the north and the south and the east. Behold it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan, but command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, and he shall go over before his people and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you will see. So he stayed in the valley opposite Beth Peor. All right, so what three questions do we ask ourselves when we read the Bible? A, what is this? You think, what is this about? B, what is the... No, no, what is the best verse to summarize this and see what are we called to do, right? So, well, we're not doing Greek, uh, yeah, we're not doing Greek alphabet right now. So, uh, hey, what is this about? What do you think this is about? So, Moses is telling the story of everything that's happened. And what, do you remember what he asks God in this, in this story? He's praying to God. What does he ask God? Do me to tell you? He says he wants to see the promised land. God, you're amazing. You are awesome. You've done all these amazing things. No other God could ever be like you. You are just so great. Please, please let me see the promised land. And what did God say? He said, Enough of that. He said, No, nope. no, 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 no. Go up to the top of, of a high mountain, Pisgah. Look to the north, look to the west, look to the east, look to the south. Right? You can see all this great stuff. But is he allowed to go into the promised land? What is the promise? The land that God had promised to Abraham to give him hundreds and hundreds of years before this. Is Moses going to be allowed to go into the promised land? Nope, but he's supposed to strengthen Joshua. And Joshua will lead the people into the promised land. Right? So that's what this is about. Is, is, is Moses praying to see the promised land and God saying, nope. Did he ever say yes? God doesn't say yes to Moses on this. Moses is going to die. And he won't get to see the promised land. Oh, you're going to drink some more milk. So he's going to, he's not going to drink the promise. Or he's not drink the promised land. He won't drink the milk in the land of milk and honey. He's not going to get to see that side of the Jordan. But, well, he had sinned. Yeah, God God had at the rock at Meribah told him uh, to speak to the rock so water would come out of it. And instead he got angry with the people and he hit the rock two times with a stick. And the Lord still made water come out of the rock because he was merciful to the people. But he said, you did not show me as righteous before the people. And so you're not going to get to enter into the land. 
Yep. Sometimes is there consequences for sin? Yeah, are those consequences always fun? Mm -mm. One time I got scared. Yeah, is that any fun? No. No way. Well, hey, you know what I have underlined in my Bible is the best verse? I would underline verse 25. And then I also have, you see what, what I've underlined? Enough of that. <laughs> but I think verse 30, 28 as well. That? Well, that's for the next time we get together. I think verse 28 is good too. But command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him. For he shall go over before this people and he shall cause them to inherit the land, which you will see. It's the last thing. Well, that's for next time. We can do that next time. So what do you think is, what do you think... Th you learn from this passage. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're called to do after hearing this? Be good. Oh, be good. Maybe follow after the Lord. Do you think we could have a big heart towards God like Moses? Yeah, we certainly can. But does that mean that he's going to not bring us consequences of this life? Right, do you think Moses do you think Moses ended up in hell? Huh? No? But he sinned. But do you think his God took away his sin? Yeah, that was the whole point of the whole tabernacle, right? So Moses, yeah, right, God, God isn't going to cast him into hell, but does that mean that that's a place of eternal fire and weeping and gnashing of teeth? The place how where you, God... How do you get down? By not believing in Jesus Christ. Yeah, because of our sins. And then not believing in Jesus. So, Moses isn't there though. Right? Moses appears with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. We know that Moses is alive and he's in glory. But, when we think about Moses in his life, did that mean that he didn't have any consequences or punishments in this life for his sin? Yeah, just, just like in your life, can God forgive you for your sins? Uh, yes. But do you think there might still be consequences? Yeah. Like spankings. <laughs> like spankings, right? Hopefully not too many, right? Mm. Hopefully those are pretty rare. Only happen for really big things. Sometimes you do it on mine. Mine. Oh. No, I've never spanked you ten times. Oh, well, you did spank me one time. Yeah, one then time. You spanked me the other time. Two times is that. Yeah. And then you spanked me a lot other times. So I can't for fifteen. Oh, so you're counting up all the spanks of your life? Okay. <laughs> well, are you ready to pray? Okay. Lord, we thank you so much that we know that you made chasten us, even punish us in this life. There may be consequences for our sins. But Lord, we thank you so much that Jesus Christ has taken our punishments. Lord, we pray that you would please let us walk in your ways. Father, we pray that you would give us faith in your Son. We thank you that you have strengthened the better Joshua, Jesus. And he is the one who leads us and directs us in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you as you trust in him as you walk in his ways. And we'll see you next time. You want to say bye-bye? Bye. -bye? bye.